The uh, 2018 Texas Poetry Calendar, which is basically a greatest hits, um, Allison Whipple, who's here, was one of the editors with me, and Wade Martin, we, we went through nine previous calendars and chose poems. Uh, and if I'm remembering correctly, the opening one is in the shape of Texas, mm -hmm. and it's by our next poet, Chip Dameron, who has a poem in this collection in the shape of New Mexico, which I found, which I, which I wager was a little easier to do than the shape of Texas. Uh, the one I love about Texas is that he managed, as he went across line by line, to to incorporate things into content that were at that place in the state of Texas geographically. It was not an easy thing to do, I'm sure. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you'll welcome Chip Dameron, who I believe is up from the Rio Grande Valley to live in this part of the world now. Welcome. Thank you. in the collection, and I'll go ahead and start with the one that David uh, referred to, <clears throat> and it's on page 24. It's called New Mexico Hopscotch. Follow Leaphorn's pickup out of Shiprock and take 64 into green mountains, rich with Christ's blood, then ski into O'Keefe country and let the light's incandescence burn that landscape into your bones then on to basket weavers, potters, and silver and turquoise artisans in Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Feast on green chile enchiladas or grab a carne adobada burrito before heading out to bond with the azure sky in Acoma Pueblo. Then irradiate yourself April 1st or October 1st at the Trinity site before tracking aliens in Roswell. <laughs> Chill out inside Carlsbad Caverns prior to crossing over to El Paso, or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, my second poem in the collection is on page 135, and it's called Name Dropping. <clears throat> In Austin, they pulled Jeff Davis' statue off its pedestal, the slave proponent and Confederate leader or traitor, then restored to his bronze origin and contextualized in a campus museum. What to make of what's way out west, 2,258 square miles of county, mountains, town, fort, and state park, named for the man who was Secretary of War under Pierce, before embodying the bloody consequences of secession. To us, place names matter. But to the volcanic rocks of the region, to the cacti and junipers, mountain lions and pronghorn antelope, dark turns to light and back to dark, utterly nameless. And the third poem I'll read is uh, by a friend of mine, uh, Canadian poet named Glenn Sorstad. This is on page 22. Uh, Glenn happens to live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and uh, a long way from uh, uh, this part of the world, but uh, uh, he's often traveled um, through the Southwest, uh, particularly in New Mexico and Texas, and this is a, a poem that uh, he had uh, submitted and was accepted called Southwestern Potpourri. Traffic dazed, a roadrunner stops, an intersection midway between life and death. Meanwhile, shadows cross Navajo blankets spread with silver jewelry. A wealthy Texas ranch man arranges for a sculptor to make him a full-size bronze statue of his favorite cow horse. A fly fisherman hikes 600 feet down into Cow's Gorge, catches two trout, then hikes back up before nightfall. Two crows debate the queasy politics of roadkill, perched on a gnarly juniper overlooking the kids' graveyard near Fort Sumner. Fire blackened, pepper, aroma, wafts across New Mexico mall lots, and in hatch, full green chile cans clank down the line. Thank you. 